Let's install and configure Microsoft Visual Studio Code for the Mac for use with C, C++ and Fortran. The first thing which we need to do is open the terminal and run the xcode-select-install command. This will download and install the C and C++ compiler for us. In the meantime, let's Google for Visual Studio Code. The first link is the correct one, code.visualstudio.com. Click on download, select the Mac version, and it will download the zip file. The zip file will be downloaded to the download folder. Double click on it to unzip, and then drag and drop the executable onto the application folder. The first time you open Visual Studio Code, it will give a security warning. Open it. And we're now greeted with the welcome screen of Visual Studio Code. Now Visual Studio Code is an editor, not an IDE. So there's no create project, uh, project option. But the easiest thing to do is create a new folder. Give it a name and drag and drop it into Visual Studio Code. So now we see it appear here in the Explorer on the sidebar. On the sidebar we also have the search the source control for Git, the run, and extensions. The extensions is the way to get support for C, C++, and Fortran. Click on extension, the C, C++, IntelliSense, install, search for C++, makefile, and install the makefile. So we've now two extensions installed one for the IntelliSense and one to create a make file. In the meantime, the software is installed. Let's check that the compilers actually work. And both the C and the C++ compiler works nicely. So in Visual Studio Code, we have these two extensions, the first one for the IntelliSense, second one for the make file. So let's see what we've gained with that. We have an empty project. We can go to the command palette, command shift P, and we now have the option to create and initialize our project. We're going to do a C++ project, and you see the appearance of the make file and two directories, a source and an object. In the options for the compiler, we can uh, leave it at G++. Here we see options which you can actually change a little bit if you start out coding. It's always good to actually have additional options like debugger, switch off optimization and some additional warnings. We have here the executable name myapp. Let's leave it at that. And for C++ the extensions has to be cpp. So our source files has to be created in the source directory after compilation, the object files will be stored in the object directory. And these are the only settings that need to be customized. So what we need to do next is go to the source and do new file. Well, let's create a small C++ program. So this actually is a working C++ program. So what we now can do is open new terminal and a terminal appears and we can actually type in the commands that we used to make to compile dot slash my app to run and make clean to clean the project. So this is a workflow which you can use, edit via Visual Studio Code and do the compile and run steps inside the terminal. We see a small artifact with the fonts. If that happens to you, go to settings, search for terminal font, and the option to set would be terminal integrated font family, and set the appropriate font. And I see that that artifact actually has disappeared. 
So this is nice. We can now work, edit the files and compile and run. It would be nice to also do this graphically or to be able to do this graphically. And for that, we need another extension, which is called Code Runner. Search for Code Runner, install. After you install extensions, it's always good to go to the command palette and make sure you do a reload window so that everything takes effect. We have the free extension installed. Let's go to the source code. And there are two things changed. Right click on any file gives you now the option run code. And there's also a button up here on the right, but you can also run code. Code runner associates commands with file types. So let's see what it by default does. Go to the settings option. Search for code runner. And there are various edit in settings.json. Click on one of them and you will see all the options that you can set in code runner. So this is also the option that we just set via the graphical interface. So they can be done in that way or also edited in the JSON file. By default, you see the file type types. So the C file, the CPP and the commands that code runner associates. By default, it CDs into the directory, compiles that single file in an executable and runs it. What we would like to do is actually make use of the make file. So the first thing to do would be to add a line, what to do when you right click on a make file. And what we would like to do is CD into the workspace root, make, and then if that works successfully, execute the program. You see here that this is an environment variable. There are quotes around it because file uh, names can have spaces in them. Save the file and let's check if right clicking now does exactly what we expect. It runs the commands, but it runs it in the output and not in the terminal. In the output, it's immutable and in the terminal, you can also give input. So if you would like to ask the user for input, then this needs to be changed from output to terminal and there are various options which we need to set to do that. Let's go back to the settings. The first option to run it in the terminal does exactly that. So if we now run the code, it appears in the terminal. The other two options that you see beneath it are also convenient to set. Save all files before run. Another option, save file before run. And a fourth option would be to set ignore selection to true. If you leave this off and you have part of the source selected and accidentally run the code via code runner, it will create temporary files that interfere with the make. So we're now set. We can actually um, right click on the make file, run the code, compile, etc. However, when you edit the code and change and modify it, You need to go to the make file, right click on it in order to do run code. So an easier solution would be just to be able to uh, keep this selected and change what code render does once you click here, run code. So let's go back to the settings. And actually the commands that we have for the make file could also be just done for any source file in our project. So let's do that for the C, C++ and for the Fortran files. We're going to use the make file and not compile individual files. Now we should be able to right click on the CPP file and it compiles and runs the code. The last thing to get working is the debugger. So we have set here various variables. Let's compile the program, set a breakpoint, and the debugger is supposed to stop at the breakpoint and we can then inspect the values of the variables. Click on debugger, we have not configured it yet, so run and debug, choose GDB LLDB, default configuration, 
And the two things we need to set is the program which we're gonna debug and fix a small issue over here. Let's run. We see the debug options appear. It stops at the breakpoint. We can inspect the variables that we just set. And we have options to continue after the breakpoint, to step over, step into, step out, restart, and stop. We have now installed and configured Visual Studio Code for C and C++. In the next video, we're going to do extend this for Fortran.